What we're going to be going over here are cash dividends paid on preferred stock and common stock and we're going to compare a non-liquidating versus a fully liquidating dividend when we pay these uh, cash dividends here on these stocks. So for example we're going to have cash of $390,000. We're going to have a preferred stock is going to be a 6% dividend rate cumulative here $50 par for $600,000 and then the common stock we're going to have a $5 par per share here $300,000 shares outstanding for $1,500,000. 500,000 and then we'll have additional paid in capital that's lumped together here for common stock and preferred stock that's $900,000. And then we also have some treasury stock we're going to have 2,800 uh, shares of treasury stock that's at the common stocks cost here and that's going to be for $67,200 and then we have retained earnings here of $210,000. So for point one here for example we're going to have preferred stock dividend in arrears here of one year so we're one year late in our payments here for preferred stock and that's at that six percent dividend rate and then for the current year dividends that have to be paid we're going to have preferred stock at a six percent dividend here and the common stock is going to pay out here at 60 cents per share and we're going to be looking at two cases here uh, case one where we're going to have net in income for the current year is estimated at 154,000 in case two here there's going to be no net income for the current year and we're going to have limited retained earnings that is we're not going to have the full two hundred and ten thousand dollars in retained earnings we just have a limited amount here okay so let's look at case one here this is where it's going to be a non-liquidating dividend here and, and we're going to be looking at the cash dividends at the declared date versus the payment date here and when we're looking at our non-liquidating dividends what we mean here is we got sufficient retained earnings and cash here to pay those dividends here so what's involved here well we're going to have a cash account we're going to have to set up a dividends payable as a liability account here and we're going to have it's going to involve our retained earnings here uh, that's because we're it's a non-liquidating dividend and we're going to have a reduction here in our retained earnings so let's start with what we're ta um, our uh, at our declared when the dividend is declared here we set up the current li divid, uh, liability here is that dividends payable that's on the date that we declare this dividend here so uh, what we would do is we credit our dividends payable here for the uh, preferred stock in the common stock dividends here preferred stock let's just look at that briefly here we got six hundred thousand at a six percent dividend rate that's for thirty six thousand dollars for preferred stock and that's for over two years for the one year in arrears here and then the current year's dividend so we credit our dividends payable here for thirty six thousand dollars for the preferred stock and then the common stock that's that three hundred thousand shares here outstanding at sixty cents per share that's one hundred eighty thousand dollars in dividends for the common stock so we credit or increase our dividends payable here for 180,000 here for the common stock that's at the declared date here when that dividend is declared here so you set up your payable you credit it for the amount of dividends that you have to pay now the corresponding entry here because it's this non-liquidating dividend that is we have enough retained earnings here to pay uh, pay out those dividend that's where we're going to pay, be paying out the corporation's profit is paid out here so uh, we had that 210,000 here in retained earnings so we had that credited here but we had a restriction here in a treasury stock this is where we have to set up and uh, set aside 67,200 here uh, because of the treasury stock has to be accounted for here for on a restriction so we're going to have a balance here in a retained earnings of $142,800 so what we do here is uh, we're, all we're going to do is reduce our retained earnings here by the those dividends here so we would have credited or set up our dividends payable on the de declaration date here of those dividends and then we debit or reduce our retained earnings here by the amount of those dividends here two years here for a preferred stock at 36,000 per year and then 180,000 here for our common stock dividend here and then that, just one point here if we're we're coming to a point here where we have a deficit here in our retained earnings and we can't do that we really can't pay out a retained earnings here based on what our beginning what our restricted balance was here 142,800 but because we're getting some net income for the year here at 154,000 dollars that's going to 
wipe out this uh, deficit here of 109,200 here. So, uh, well, with the net income that we have for the year, we add that into our retained earnings here, and then we're going to uh, take care of all our dividends for the year here and we'll still have the difference here we'll have a balance of forty four thousand eight hundred dollars so with our non liquidating dividend we went out and we directly reduced here our retained earnings for those those dividends amount here and that's on the date that the dividend was declared here and that's our earned capital so we're able to pay out our dividends here the corporate uh, based on uh, because the corporation has profit here we're able to pay it out here okay so we take we've taken care of the data declaration here we set up our payable and then we directly reduced our retained earnings here by the amount of those dividends now just on the payment date well we take care of our oh, we would uh, debit out our dividends payable here uh, if by the amount of those dividends here so we would end up with a zero balance here in our dividends payable that's at our payment date here and uh, then the debit amount here or dividends payable the corresponding would be to the cash here the dividend payment at the dividend payment date here we reduce our cash here by the amount of those dividends here so you can see here this is what we want to look at here so at the um, payment date here we just reduce our payable take that off zero it off of the books here and then we pay out the cash amount here so that's how we take of taking care of this these cash dividends here we had to set up determine our declared date here um, versus our payment date here declared date we set up our payable we reduce our retained earnings uh, because it is a non-liquidating dividend here and then at the payment date we reduce our payable here and we also reduce our cash here okay so we've taken care of our cash dividends here for this non-liquidating dividend now let's look at the case two here and this is the case here where again we're going to look at our declared date versus our payment date here for this cash a uh, cash dividend here but this the case two here this is where we're going to have a fully liquidating dividend and what we mean by that is here we don't have enough retained earnings so we're going to use the additional paid in capital here to pay out those dividends here so this is the difference here remember with the uh, uh, non-liquidating we were, we were paying out our dividends here based on the retained earnings in this case we don't have enough retained earnings so we're going to use additional paid in capital here so we're going to reduce our additional paid in capital here on uh, the data declaration here so let's look at that so again same thing here for our dividends payable we set up that current liability here on the date that is declared here we credit our dividends payable for the um, dividends that we have to pay here on our preferred stock and our common stock and then the debit amount here corresponding debit amount here would be to reduce the additional paid in capital here and I lumped the common stock and the preferred stock together here and this is for this fully fully liquidating dividend everything when we talk about fully liquidating everything is coming out of our additional paid in capital or uh, it's the additional paid in capital here for our common stock and our preferred stock. So we left our prior amounts alone here. We have enough additional paid in capital here that we, uh, we have to work off first here. So we don't have to go into our uh, common stock or our preferred stock par amount. So at the um, date here that it's declared, we would have debited our additional paid in capital here for those dividends that are payable here. 36,000 for each of the two years here for the preferred stock and 180,000 here for the common stock dividend. Okay, now and that's for the declaration date here. Now at the payment date, same thing as we did before here. We would credit or reduce our cash account here for the preferred stock dividends here and our common stock dividend. And the other thing here, uh, when this is the case here where our dividends payable, we would debit that out here so we'd end up with a zero balance and no further liability here after we pay out those dividends so this is taking care of our payment date here credit or reduce our cash account here debit or re and reduce our dividends payable or as liability here and then what we have to we'll go back and look at it here for just for both cases here uh, we had to determine if we had enough cash and we did here in both cases for the non-liquidating dividend and this fully liquidating dividend we started out with our cash amount here of three hundred ninety thousand and then 
uh, we were able to pay those cash dividends here and because we had a remaining balance we had enough here to out of the 390,000 to pay those um, cash dividends. So we ended up with 138,000 here in a balance in our cash dividends. But what we want to look at here, uh, just to point out the difference here, with the liquidating dividends, we reduced our common stock or it would be the additional paid in capital for both our common stock and additional paid uh, preferred stock here. We reduce the additional paid in capital here when we're talking about a liquidating dividend. That, um, reduces the uh, paid in capital here for the uh, shareholders here versus where our non-liquidating dividend here we reduced our retained earnings or our profits so that was really the difference between the non-liquidating dividend here and our liquidating dividend liquidating we go and we reduce our additional paid in capital and that's uh, again the paid in capital here for the um, for the uh, dividends that we ha had to pay here. And that's really really because we didn't have enough retained earnings, so we had to use the additional paid in capital of the, uh, that the stockholders have here. And then again, for the non-liquidating dividend, we reduced the retained earnings or our profits because we had enough retained earnings or profits to do, do that here. So um, in the case here of our uh, where we had the fully liquidating dividend, the corporation's paid in capital was being actually paid back to the uh, shareholders. Whereas with the non-liquidating, the uh, profit uh, that the company had in the retained earnings was being paid back to the uh, shareholders of the company. So that's really the difference here. Liquidating dividends, we're paying back the uh, paid in capital or what the uh, shareholders have here paid in in their capital account uh, and it's being paid back to them whereas the non-liquidating dividend that's where they're being uh, uh, the retained earnings of the company is being paid back to the shareholders that's the profits of the company okay so that takes care of our uh, both our fully liquidating and our non-liquidating dividends and again remember we're talking about fully liquidating dividend here that's where everything is being coming uh, come out being paid back here uh, based on the additional paid in capital or the paid in capital here of the company. Okay, so that takes care of that here. And then just remember the declaration date here, you set up your payable and you, in this case, you reduced your additional paid in capital or if it was for the uh, uh, non-liquidating, you reduced your retained earnings here. And then at the payment date here, that's where you would remove your payable or your liability off the off the balance sheet here, debit that out, and then you'd credit or reduce your cash account for those dividends. Okay, so that takes care of our uh, cash dividends paid out here on the preferred stock and common stock where we compared the non-liquidating versus fully liquidating dividends.